Welcome to How to Cook That. I'm Anne Reardon and you told me that you love this series. So today I am doing another debunking video where I take viral videos that you've sent to me and examine them and expose the ones that may not be 100% true. There could be a little bit of fakery in there. So let's get started. This first one is by Blossom. They put a can of sweetened condensed milk in a pan and pour cake batter around it. Then they open the can Phew, I'm glad they did that. And then they bake it in the oven. And they have oven ready dulce de leche. Then they pour that over the cake, looks amazing. But I don't think it's gonna work. What do you think? And why do you think it's not gonna work? I think it's not gonna work because I don't think it's long enough in the oven to turn the sweetened condensed milk into dulce de leche, but I could be wrong, so let me check it out. You may not realize, but with debunking videos, I often test these recipes more than once just to check they definitely don't work even if I alter a few things in it. So for example, with this cake, I baked two of them and I baked one at the normal temperature for this cake and I baked another one at a lower temperature so I could keep it in the oven for longer. And both had the same result. The cake looks good, it's baked nicely. This looks nice, but it doesn't look like theirs does. And if I move away the top, you'll see that we have just sweetened condensed milk underneath still. It hasn't gone into that dulce de leche caramel at all. The solution to this would be to take this out and add in a can of caramel top and fill, which here in Australia, the same brand does both of those. And that looks much like what they had. Here is the one baked in the oven. And here is the caramel top and fill. Now, don't get me wrong, you can make dulce de leche from a tin of sweetened condensed milk. It's been done many times before. Some people like to put an unopened can in a pan of water, covering the can with water and boil it for a long time. The problem with that method is if you forget about it on the stovetop and the water gets low, the can's going to explode as Teresa G found out. I just had an explosion. It sounded like a bomb going. <laughs> oh, I can't clean up a big mess. Just as well she wasn't near that when it exploded or she would have had hot caramel all over her. So don't do that method. What you can do is open the can and put some foil over the top and pull it down really tightly, give it a good tight seal, and then put that in a water bath, obviously not covering the top because the foil would let the water in, just about two thirds the way up the can with the water and either put it in the oven or in your slow cooker. And it's again got to be cooked for quite a long time. So you do want to keep an eye on it and make sure you keep topping up the water and that way as well you can take off the foil and check how dark your caramel color is and stop cooking it when it's how you like it. Now moving on to the next one you may remember in a previous video the recipe that I looked at and debunked that was marshmallows and eggs in a milk carton and both So Yummy and 5 Minute Crafts had done it but in the So Yummy video, you could clearly see they'd cut the bottom off the milk carton. Five Minute Crafts hadn't done that. The recipe didn't work regardless of which way you did it, but I found it fascinating this week that I found a new recipe on Five Minute Crafts where they're doing the same recipe. So I thought, let's see if they've improved it and see what they've done. So if we watch that, you can see they're adding the marshmallows and an egg, another egg, giving it a shake, and then they're putting it in the microwave. So the recipe is exactly the same. This is still not gonna work. And then, <laughs> if you look at the before and after footage of before it went in the microwave and after, you can see they've now cut it off at the bottom as well. So we can see the recipe is clearly fake because they've cut the milk carton in half. I just think that's bizarre that you would copy what someone else had done to the extreme of cutting a milk carton in half. This is a problem with misinformation and in this case, disinformation. Disinformation is, is deliberate falsehood. It's the fabrication of information done in such a way that it's not immediately recognizable to you or to me necessarily. If everyone's copying everyone else, the wrong information just gets repeated and repeated and repeated. And then often people who are just watching it think that must be right because it's on multiple sources and multiple channels. Let's move on. In this video, they take Oreo scraps and crush them, put them in a cup, fill it with milk and microwave for four minutes and you get an easy mug cake. Well, let me test that one out, shall we? So we'll start off with some 
Oreos. It looks like on theirs they have one, two, three, if we add those together, and then their little bits make four Oreos. So we'll crush those up and scoop them into my cup. Hmm, can you spot a problem here? My cup is nearly empty, and so is theirs. But then in the very next shot, theirs is magically full. Clearly I don't have enough Oreos in my cup. So let me add some more. I'm gonna need an extra one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks about right, but plus the original four, that makes 11 Oreos. That's nearly a whole packet. This better be for a whole family, not just for one person to eat. Fill that with milk and microwave for four minutes. Ta-da! Oh, bring the cup to me. <laughs> Magnificent. I love what you've done with it. Is this one of those inner cup, in yes. a, like is the idea you serve it in a mug? Most of it's in the microwave. Wow. Well, I'll just go deep, deep into the dagger bar system. <laughs> Mmm. It's actually okay. Well, at least it tasted okay. Now this recipe all started from a viral TikTok video where a girl took four Oreos and mixed it with enough milk to make quite a thick sludge. There wasn't heaps of milk in there and then microwaved it to make a small cake. So you can make this work. You just have to remember to only use four Oreos. Don't fill the cup with them. Don't fill the cup with milk and don't expect it to be a full cup of cake because that's not going to happen with this recipe. It's going to be a little bit down the bottom of your cup if you've got a big cup. In the same video, they tip brownie mix into a paper bag and then sprinkle on some nuts fold over the top and microwave for 10 minutes to make lovely looking brownies. Now, you should know by now how I feel about microwaving anything for 10 minutes. Unless it's a frozen meal that's big and solidly frozen, you're gonna be in trouble. 10 minutes is just too long in the microwave. But anyway, I will test it and see what happens. Pour the brownie mix into the bag, sprinkle on the nuts, Fold it down and again, and then microwave it for 10 minutes. <coughs> that is smoke, not steam. <coughs> Just give me a second. <coughs> oh, that smells so bad. My whole kitchen stinks. Let's open this up. You might notice here that I've got a small layer of brownies stuck to my bag, which is what you'd expect if you're baking on paper that's not non-stick. But in their video, the bag is perfectly clean. It's as if the brownie was put in the bag after baking elsewhere. Mine doesn't look too bad on the outside. Well, it doesn't look good either. But if I smell it or cut into it, you can clearly see that it is badly burnt. <laughs> wow, it's uh, metamorphosized into charcoal. Ugh. Ah. <laughs> wow, I need a water. Okay, let's have a look how Five Minute Crafts choose to bake their brownies if you don't have an oven. Well, they're using a razor to make a mini cute little foil baking tin and fill it with brownie mixture and then they put it on a hair straightener and it bakes. And then they've obviously repeated that a couple more times so that they have three tiny little not very good looking brownies. I guess I have to test it and see what's gonna happen, hey? I've made my eraser sized tin out of foil, add in the brownie mixture, and carefully put that onto the hot hair straightener so I don't burn my fingers, and start a timer. Now I'm gonna have to fast forward this for you. minutes later you have one brownie so it's probably not the most energy efficient way to cook them and I'm not sure about the safety of leaving the hair straightener on for long enough to cook multiple of these but of course it does work because the hair straightener is a heat source it is hot they are a little bit overcooked at the bottom and still sticky on top as you'd expect because the heat source was directly on the base 
you'd have to be pretty desperate to cook brownies on a hair straightener. But who knows, people might be in lockdown with no ovens, no microwaves. Let me know what you would do if you were trying to cook brownies yourself at home and you had no oven, no microwave. What would be your idea? Put that in the comments and I'll pin the best suggestion. Next video. They grab an orange and cut off the top. Scoop all the orange out and add an egg and another one and a little bit of milk. Stir it up and bake. Wow, well it looks all right at the end but I'm just a bit confused what they're trying to make here. Like it looks like it should be a dessert to me, that looks like it should be an orange creme brulee but if you're making that you'd need to add some sugar at least, preferably leave the egg whites out and add a little bit more cream in there so you've just got the milk cream, egg yolks, a bit of sugar and the orange flavour from the orange on the outside. That sounds really <laughs> yummy but this has no sugar in it so it's clearly not what they were going for. They weren't doing a dessert so then it's more like quiche filling but with no savoury elements to it. So that's a really weird recipe. I'm definitely making this for Dave to try. Cut the top off the orange. It's actually really hard to get the orange out when you've only got this little bit cut off the top. And I don't want to put a hole in my orange because we've got to bake it in the oven, so I've got to be super careful. I remember my mum used to have a grapefruit knife that was like curved. That might help with this. My mum lives in a different state, so let me just go <laughs> to my garage and bend my knife. There we go. One curved grapefruit knife. That works much better to cut it around the edge and then scrape it all out with the spoon, then pretend that that was really easy. Add an egg and another, then a little bit of milk. Now I think my orange is smaller than theirs or my eggs are bigger because it's a bit too full and it's impossible to beat the eggs effectively inside the orange. So I'm going to tip the whole thing into a bowl, whisk it up and then tip it back in. But I'm not going to add all of it back in, I'm just going to fill it to the same level as their orange was, just to be fair, and then bake that in the oven. Wow, <laughs> it overflowed. We have this eggy mixture everywhere, so I'm just going to get rid of that and move it to one side. There, that actually looks okay. Here we go. Ooh, wow. I think I'm going to flip the lid and uh, in we go. It actually looks kind of cool. Looking forward to this one. <laughs> what? That is not what I expected at all. What were you expecting? Uh, something like sweet and, and nice. and uh, Like an orange custard? Yeah, something like... orangey maybe. You know, they're kind of related to the... What does it taste like? Uh, it tastes like an omelette. <laughs> it's like an omelette in an orange. Wow, that's what I want. Moving on to the next one that you sent me, which is this one by 5 Minute Crafts. They draw a circle the size of a lid on the top of their watermelon and then tip in two bottles of soft drink so that it goes into the watermelon and then when you cut it open, I assume it's supposed to taste of Coke. They don't actually say, we can't really tell from the girl's expression, but I assume that's what they're going for. We'll give it a try and see what happens. Cut a hole in the middle of my watermelon. I'm going to put the watermelon on top of the Coke so I can tip it up without spilling it. And then tip it over. <laughs> no, quick, grab a cloth. It's fizzing everywhere. No, it's going on me. Quick, I don't want it on the cameras. Oh no, we're basically just emptying a bottle of Coke onto the bench because it's just reacting with the watermelon and fizzing everywhere. Attempt number two, this time I'm going to make the holes much smaller so as you can see that's quite a bit smaller than that one and then I'm going to add some sugar into the soft drink to make it flat so it doesn't fizz when it hits the watermelon. I've added heaps and heaps of paper towel underneath it as well just in case and we have it in. Let's put another half bottle of flat soda in the other side. Screw that in there nice and tight and see if I can get it to balance. There we go. Now this is actually a time lapse of photos, one photo taken every minute over seven hours. And as you can see the drink is going down 
but I think it's all going down to the paper towel because the paper towel is getting wetter and wetter as the drink slowly drips down the outside of the melon. So as you can see, Coke doesn't just pour into a watermelon like it did on their video. Their first bottle was nearly empty before they'd even managed to get the second bottle on there. So we know it's not a time lapse. They've filmed that in real time. The only way that could have happened is if they've carved out the back of the watermelon and they've got a bowl sitting under there for that Coke just to pour into. For those of you who are a bit skeptical of that and you think, well, they can't have because in the next shot, they've got a whole watermelon there and you can see the holes cut in it. Let me show you the watermelon from before and the watermelon from after. I think they switched watermelons on us. What do you think? Well, let's check on the melon that we had marinating in that soft drink for all that time. You can see here how much drink has just leaked onto the bench. It is just literally dripping. It's just drenched. It's another mess for me to clean up. Debunking is so fun. <laughs> Now let's cut this thing open. You can see a little bit of discoloration right where the bottle was, but not very much at all. In the center hole, I poked a skewer right down to see if I could encourage the Coke to go in, but it just didn't work. I'll cut a bit from the very edge section and see if Dave can taste anything different. It certainly doesn't look appetizing. I wish I could took a good watermelon and wrecked it. Next we have this one from Tastemade that someone sent me in to test. So we've got a whole new channel that we haven't had on debunking before. They brown these bananas in the oven, peel them, scoop out the middle, put it into a blender, add some milk, blend that up, and then pour it into molds, refrigerate it, and then tip out a set molded dessert. Now, I know this looks impossible because there's no gelatin, you'd think there's nothing to make it set, but bananas are particularly high in starch, and if you heat starch up, it does thicken things. If you have a sauce on the stovetop and you need it to be thicker, you can add a bit of rice flour or a bit of normal flour, a bit of corn flour, and you mix that through, and as the starch granules burst, it thickens up the sauce and then if you refrigerate that if you've added enough flour it will kind of gel together a bit like that so the question is will the bananas be enough to set it like that I'm not sure what it's going to taste like mind you um, so we'll test all of that out and see put the bananas in the oven until the skin is black peel a banana scoop out the flesh now it is worth noting here that as a banana ripens, some of the starch in it turns to sugar. That's why it gets sweeter the riper it is. So the more ripe the banana is, the less starch will be in it. So that it won't be as good at setting this dessert. Blend it up and then pour that into molds. Now my mixture looks a bit thicker than theirs is. I did add milk to the exact same volume that they had on their blender, but perhaps the, my bananas were not as ripe as theirs or maybe they added more milk off camera, I'm not sure. We'll refrigerate those for 30 minutes, and there you have a set dessert. Then they added cream to the top of that and chocolate sauce. Taste test time. Oh, wow, this one actually looks good. Thanks, Anne. See, she does look after me. All right, so uh, it's got a fair amount of liquid down the bottom. I'm a little bit weirded out by that, but I'm going to give it a go because, you know, I can trust you. Oh, it is just so disappointing. <laughs> it's like a, it's kind of like baby food. It's like a banana gloop. I wonder if you added a little bit more sweetness to that, whether it would taste a lot better. It is interesting though that they've used the bananas to set it. I think that's a creative way of doing it. And certainly if you're a vegan, this is a good thing to explore because obviously if you don't want to use gelatin, it's good to have some other things that you can use to set a dessert. So give that a go, experiment, see if you can come up with your own recipe there using that as a base to make it set. Next, I thought I'd do a couple of hacks that technically do work, but really annoy me. I just don't like them, they frustrate me because I think there's an easier way to do them. So I'm like, isn't the whole purpose of a hack to make it easy? The first one I'm gonna show you is the 
cutting a cake into two layers using toothpicks. So they measure the cake the whole way around and add a toothpick at the exact same height all the way around the cake, which just takes forever in real time. Then add the dental floss around resting on top of the toothpicks and then pull that tight to cut the cake into two layers. And yes, it does do the job, but I just don't think it's the best way to do the job. So I thought I'd share with you my hack for what I do if I need to do this. Have a look at your cake, measure where halfway up is and grab something that is that height. Lids are a good place to look in your kitchen cupboard first and then grab a knife and rest it across so that it's resting on both sides of the lid. That will keep your blade level and flat and then you just cut gently, turning your cake as you go, and it is quick and simple, and you have a beautifully cut cake. You didn't have to put toothpicks the whole way around. And then you can also just easily repeat that with the top of the cake, just to flatten off the top so that you end up with two layers that are exactly the same height and perfectly done there, much quicker than doing it the other way. Now also, if I zoom in and show you, here are two that are cut with toothpicks and the dental floss and here are the perfectly smooth and flat one done with the knife obviously because the knife is a lot sharper. Now this next one this is just weird to me I don't get what they were thinking but they have a whole big bowl of lentils that they're trying to tip into a little narrow jar and it's spilling everywhere so they take a bottle and they cut it out to make a scoop shape. And then the scoop is so awkwardly shaped that they can only get the equivalent of one tablespoon at a time and tip it into their jar so you could have just used a normal spoon. Now, quite honestly, number one, who has lentils in a big bowl that they need to tip into a jar? They usually come in a bag and you can just pour it into the jar. But let's pretend that you do have something in a big bowl that you want to get into a narrow vessel. Wouldn't it make more sense to take your empty bottle and cut off the whole top of the bottle and then put that on top of your jar and tip your lentils in into your homemade funnel. Well, that's enough hack improving and debunking for one day. I'd like to say thank you to all my patrons for your ongoing support. You guys are absolutely awesome. Click here to watch more of my videos and you can of course subscribe to How To Cook That for more as well. Make it a great week by loving others and I'll see you on Friday.